We are the Stop Wearing My Clothes podcast. I'm Amy. I'm Kayla. One podcast, Past two, two sisters. sisters. This is episode number 73, and we will be d- recapping The Golden Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, and we will also be talking about the latest Bachelor news. So there are some big ones this week. Let's discuss all about it. What are you up to this weekend, oh, sister of mine? Uh, kind of living in hell right now. Why? <laughs> My children have hand, foot, and mouth. And uh, sorry to you, YouTube listeners, don't look too closely at me because this is what no sleep looks like. And be nice yeah. in the comments, please. <laughs> is there like an official name or that people, that's like, it's an it's a interesting name. Hand Reminds me of the Wiggles. Yeah. His shoulders, knees and toes, <laughs> knees and toes. <laughs> what have you been doing this weekend? I made a new friend. You're not my only friend anymore. Oh, let's hear it. His name is Al and he's a spider. And he lives outside my kitchen window. And he's about yay big. And at first I was terrified. But then when I realized that me and Marcus were too scared to do anything about it, I leaned in. And he's part of the family now. And free Halloween decoration. (laughs) There you go. I was telling Jared, every single time I come up to the podcast little studio room I have, I'm like, one of these days, I'm going to find a spider. I just feel it in my soul. This is where they would go to hide. And I'm always like, uh. If you ever find a spider that you're worried about, Marcus has an in. He's got a spider aficionado he works with. And so at any point, if I send him a picture, he sends it to his friend or he works with them. So he shows it to him. And then I can know how dangerous it is, what their habits are. I know what to expect. So for example, I, this, he is completely fine. He's not going to hurt anybody. He just looks like he's going to eat your face off and (laughs) randomly. So he's been the perfectly in the center of our window outside. I woke up this morning, the far left of our window. And Marcus is like, yeah, so they eat their web and then they just all are constantly moving. So we only probably have a few more days until he's past our window. Maybe you need to be careful not to bond because I'm not sure you can handle loss like that. (laughs) That's true. That's true. But I say good morning to him every morning when I make my coffee. And I've realized when he's sleeping, I have no life. When he's sleeping, his front like legs are huge. Get all tucked in. Kind of (laughs) cute. I need to get outside more. Well, you know, outside, <laughs> like not in the wilderness, but around other people. Speaking <laughs> of people, um, Bachelor Nation consists of people and the contestants who go on them. And <laughs> we have some breaking news a little bit this week. Some top mm-hmm. news at Bachelor Nation. And one's sad and one's happy. Let's start with sad so we can like start end on that. a high. 100%. I'm always so, down for that. Yeah. Serene went on the Off the Vine podcast, Caitlin Bristol's podcast, and confirms there's been a little bit of rumors. I haven't paid too much attention, but Mm -hmm. especially when it comes from like the source's mouth, that's when my ears perk up. But Mm -hmm. Serene says that her and Brandon, they got engaged on a bachelor in paradise. He cheated on her. And the mm-hmm. fact the fact that I am baffled, how many of these couples I'd be like, oh yeah, that does that doesn't surprise me. This is the one where I was like, he wouldn't ever and so it makes me just further my distrust in men yeah because he was like the sweetest and the most like seemingly loyal guy ever i think that we've ever seen on bachelor in paradise just a zoom never looked away and then serene is the sweetest like what freaking happened like it doesn't matter if you're even in a rough spot like oh my goodness i was just shookest but easy in the first few years I mean, yeah, but then Brandon came out with the post. And what do you think about that? So I actually have not read it. I was going to do a live reaction right now on the podcast. Okay, because to me, it makes a big difference on how I feel about the situation. Ooh, okay. I'm going to read it. It'll be up on the screen for YouTubers. In light of recent events that have transpired over the last few days, I needed to take a beat to reflect and process my emotions surrounding this delicate matter that is intimate and personal to me. Now that I've had a moment to digest, I want to clear the air and respond with my truth. I understand that there is a narrative circulating that falsely paints my character, so I wanted to provide some light to the situation. To be transparent before leaving to Texas, my partner and I made the difficult choice to end our relationship and go our separate ways. As this was a public relationship, we both decided to hold off on sharing the news until we mutually felt like it was time that we shared the news with family and friends. 
Where I have taken fault and responsibility is a conversation we shared the day before I left speaking on doing long distance. Unfortunately, during this time of private separation, coming back from Austin, a video came to light that, while harmless, made my ex-partner upset. After speaking with her on -on one-on-one navigating our new normal, she felt that I had cheated and wanted to make this news known. For the record, in the early days of our official breakup, I shared one dance with a woman, nothing else, just a single dance before leaving with my friends. Completely understanding where her valid feelings were coming from, I took ownership regarding her feelings and my actions as we have made amends and agreed to put this behind us. I was surprised to learn very publicly that there are still lingering issues between us that that need to be resolved. Out of profound respect and love for the time we share together, I want to move forward peacefully, ultimately hoping to preserve our memories and form a relationship. Thank you for all taking the time to read this. I appreciate you, and I'm hopeful for a fresh start now that I've shared the story through my lens. So he doesn't think he cheated in his head. So it looks like there is a lack of communication. I did watch the video, which is very hard to actually even watch and see anything from, in my opinion. Because they don't actually kiss in the video. No, and I didn't even... They're kind of no. just kind of grinding. They're just up real Honestly, like, I would be mad if Marcus was with a girl like that. Honestly, you don't. I, I, it was so quick that I didn't even really know that it was him. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, they're standing by each other. And I guess because of the way her, she's leaning, it's like she's leaning up against him. If I was in a relationship with someone, I'd be like, what the hell is this? For sure. But I do see his point a little bit. Because what about, okay, so they were broken up, seemed like, in his head. They were broken up, but then Mm -hmm. right before he left to go to Texas, it was like, well, maybe we'll do long distance or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And maybe she thought, okay, we're doing long distance, and maybe he thought, like, whatever. You know what this reminds me of? Hmm. Rachel and Ross, we we were (laughs) on a break. Yeah, there you go. People having the same conversation, but it meaning very different things to each Mm -hmm. person. And... Interesting. And I still okay. love both. So Brandon is not the villain that like it's interesting that Serene is trying to make it public. I don't know. It's I mean, she obviously, I mean, I would be she's her and she has every mm-hmm. right to be. So I mean, yeah, you're right. It's very gray. It's not as black and white as I initially was thinking. And I think that there's more to say then than maybe Serene, if she really feels strong in how she feels, then maybe we need to see hear more of her story. Cause she didn't really give much of a story. I think she just said yeah. Well, time will tell. We'll keep our ears open for that and make sure to be following us on TikTok and Instagram so we could be on. We've really been sucking lately with Bachelor News, but we'll get better this week. And if I hear anything, I'll let you guys know first. Um, Happy, Amy, you take this one. Becca, obviously everybody knows Becca, Bachelorette. She went to the beach and met Thomas and they have been together. They were engaged. They've just had a baby. And now they went to the courthouse on the 13th and Mike... My, what is he? What season was he off of? Was it off of Becca's season? He, the one, the virgin, the oh, virgin yeah, boy. He was on um, Katie Thurston season. Yes. No. Yes, and so was Thomas. I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so they're friends. Was okay. Well, Mike um, officiated like the oh, little thing cute. that they did because then they went to like a virgin home. to officiate a wedding. <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> like a preacher i don't know some part Uh, of me feels like he's not a virgin anymore but i don't know Probably not. they had originally planned this year before she found out she was pregnant to get married on the 7th there was some sort of significance to that but i forget okay so this year they're like okay we're gonna get married on the 7th like courthouse wise but on the 7th their baby was two weeks old they're like yeah right we're not doing this so literally two days before the 13th just randomly they were like what do you think about the 13th friday the 13th would that be a good day and they're like yeah sure if we are, if we feel up to it, and then they just went and did it that day. <laughs> That's kind of fun. I think it's kind of funny. I think Becca doesn't really care, to be honest. I think Becca. I think Thomas is the is the romantic I in the situation. Because I also saw in stories she was like, Thomas wants the whole wedding, walk down the aisle, of vows. So I guess I'll let him have it. And but I told him he's planning the whole thing. <laughs> So yeah, because I figured they're going to pull a Joe and Serena, right? Joe and Serena were married for like a year before they did like an actual like full on ceremony and stuff. Yeah. So I'm so excited about them. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 Amy, do you remember when the very first for their season of Bachelor in Paradise, when their the sneak peek came out and we saw Thomas and Becca on a date? And I about lost my damn mind. I, um, like I don't say damn very it. often, but it was like... <laughs> Yeah, that's how strongly I felt about it. I was not on their team, but mm-hmm. I'm glad I was wrong. And they both seem really happy. Well, yeah, and they didn't even leave together. 
Oh, yeah. They're, they yeah. have such an interesting story when it comes to, like, the Bachelor story. It's, like, all their own. And Thomas has just shocked me. I think he's just a sweet little sensitive soul. And he just loves his baby. And they're just so sweet. Little Benny. Yeah. Um, a little they're ben so ben. cute. So happy Agreed. for Agreed. So, uh, sad and happy. But let's get on to even happier things, which is the Golden Bachelor. And a second chance at love. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right, I got some bad news for you. What? Eight o'clock. I, I don't have live Hulu anymore because I'm cheap. And Same. I am using this new service. And at eight o'clock, I got on and I paused it. So I'm like, I can watch it all live, whatever. So I'm watching it. And the whole time, I'm like, I'm not even going to try to click on anything because I'm terrified that I'm going to mess it up. Mm-hmm. Well, towards the middle, I was like, I can just skip the commercial. You know, I'm way past where it is live. So I click it. Switches to another channel. And I'm like heart drops and so then when I got back on there it was live and I had already gone to the to the rose ceremony so I missed a little chunk of golden bachelor I actually had a bit of bad luck as well on Thursday night because there was um I posted on our Instagram saying that President Biden is having like a speech or something so the show is starting at 8 22 now Mm -hmm. so I was like oh okay cool so I was doing my own thing between 8 to 8 20 turned it on it was not the case. It felt like it was like already kind of in the middle of the episode. So yeah. then I turned it off. Where but, did you hear about that? Um, it was through the Bachelor Instagram account. It told us, say, hey, it's 822, blah, blah, blah. Like maybe it started a little bit after eight, but it was not 822. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, I ended up watching it Friday night. Um, so Amy missed a little bit of it, but I could fill, fill in the blanks. But let's start kind of from the beginning of the episode which is the group date and mm-hmm. the pickleball tournament. And we've got Joey, the next bachelor. We've got Trista, the very first bachelorette. What did you think? I thought it was fun. I always love seeing old faces or kind of Joey's kind of a new face around. Get us excited about his season. Just old people in pickleball. What a treat. <laughs> you know who the MVP and was for me? Who? April. April. Amy, how right was I when I was um, on TikTok? Guys, go watch our Instagram. I did a little just from their bio and picture. I was like, April, lovable villain. Yeah. And then from the very first episode, she pulls him first. She like does a little quip to one of the other girls on the second episode. And then mm. this episode, she pretends to fall and hurt herself during a pickleball tournament and then everyone starts like swarming her and then she's like oh no keep going go doing your thing but just holds on to gary oh sorry my whole my whole desk shook um and then she's on her interview she's like i'm not really hurt weak and it was just the most iconic like if there is a golden bachelor paradise she needs to be on the beach yes because you imagine i'm obsessed with her what would that become? Wait, did you miss the Never Have I Ever? Amy? No, I watched. I saw that. No, I saw that. The Never Have I Ever. I could have just the entire episode could have been all those ladies playing <laughs> Never Have I Ever, and I was an also lovable villain. Like, who has kissed someone else's husband? <laughs> April takes a drink on national television. Like, oh uh, yeah, technically it could be separate or something. Like, they, we didn't get into the details. Yeah. But, oh my goodness. <laughs> I just, I loved every second of it. But uh, back to the group date. I the... love the name of the teams. That was just yeah, really, was, was just organic. funny to me. Um, And I can't remember her name. The girl that missed her freaking daughter's wedding. I don't understand. I, yeah, I Not actually. Not a front runner. Mm-mm. I I actually don't think I would have done that. I, I don't really have don't. children, but if one of my cat daughters got married to another cat, I there's nothing in the world that would stop me. What I don't about know. Jack? It's, what if Jack was getting married? Does oh, that, I don't think I can miss that either. Yeah, see, I I understand it in theory, but also I would maybe I would go and then like see where I was at at that moment and be like. Unless she really believes she's got a chance. Maybe but. she does, but I... I know, maybe we're being rude to just be like, yeah, <laughs> she's no, got I, a chance. I, the internet agrees. No one yeah. would ever miss their daughter's wedding, even if that's they were like, a front runner. That's like a big deal, mom and daughter. Like, that's a big... Maybe no, it was like a... It's kind of weird. Maybe it was like a courthouse. Maybe it wasn't like a big wedding. Let's hope for that. Can we talk about how long it took them to FaceTime? 
the daughter. <laughs> that was the I loved it. <laughs> Old people things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then we've got this egg of Kathy and Teresa. And if anyone wants to fight with me, I'll fight because Kathy is a villain. Yeah. And no one can say anything different. Maybe Teresa is a little, um, what's the word I want to use? A little kind of floating around. Like maybe she just kind of is in her own little world a little bit, I think, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And doesn't fully see how she's being perceived around her. Mm -hmm. Like was not nice. Not nice. But I almost died. Um, I'm going to go back to when um, Trista came into the room and she stops the, uh, Teresa stops the conversation. She's like, let me tell you about my one-on-one date with him. I was like, oh my God, Teresa, just stop while you're ahead. Stop. I but know. it does not give Kathy permission to speak to her like that. Mm-mm. No. Honestly, just stop speaking to her. I also think Teresa is like, okay, obviously Kathy and you are not that good of friends. You need to release no. that. That That's is not no friend of yours. That is no friend of yeah, yours. Yeah, because she when they were walking onto the thing, her little interview was like, I know, I know that we're so close. And that and that like hurts my heart because it's sad because it's obvious. You are pummeling Teresa into the ground. You are not being nice at all. And I've never seen Gary mad. But I felt he was a little mad. And I kind of liked it. was kind of hot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like so worried about him taking Kathy's side the last mm-hmm. episode. So I'm glad he was able to see the situation clearly. Because it's never yeah. okay to, to speak to someone like that. It's not like she like cussed or anything. But just the way she said it and like zip it. Like don't tell yeah. me when I can speak. I can speak whenever the fuck I want. Kathy's like, no, I'm going to be mad at you no matter what you freaking say. And I'm Yeah, gonna- she was not having it. I think Gary's roses are interesting. Sometimes I think that he is trying to, um, what's the word? Okay, oh, Sandra got the group date rose. Sandra got the group date rose. And then the week before, he gave Kathy a rose when she was really upset and sad, which is fine. But I just think sometimes he goes about it as like, which make you feel better. Yeah, make you feel better versus actual feelings. But maybe sure. that's not true. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's like, I do really care about you. I'm going to give you the rose anyways. Might as well give it to you Because maybe you just need that reassurance right now. Maybe yeah, more exactly. than others. And I already exactly. know I'm going to give you a rose later. So yeah, um, doesn't necessarily mean that they're front runners, I don't think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which most of the time in other seasons, though, it means that they're front runners. I feel like. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, I agree that that's not necessarily how Gary's working. Mm-hmm. okay so uh, next we got leslie yes leslie got a one-on-one and i've said top four before this but i think she could be top three maybe even top two mm-hmm. but you don't I think, think she'll be one or you just don't know i'm Too open to, to it but i think mm-hmm. she's top tier for mm-hmm. him i mm-hmm. mean she's so hot first of all i mean he, yeah. he can't ask that but also i feel yeah. like i like when he's like i just love the oh i guess you didn't watch this part but when yeah, they were probably talking did. Oh, yeah, okay. He's like, I just love the way that you look at me. And mm-hmm. I don't know. And she's like never had like it's very they come from very different things. She's been oh, yeah. divorced twice, has never felt like she's had that like love of her life. And he and seems like had. she's been with very not nice guys too. It yeah. Seems like. So I think that's she's really leaning in and being like, Oh my goodness, Gary's nothing like any of the people that I normally pick, mm-hmm. and this is what I want. That actually gives me goosebumps. It could be really special. It could be so really, too. really special. She found because- him and Sometimes you find the love of your life later on and that's okay. And that makes even like the shorter amount of years that you have with them even more special. Yeah. And for Gary, like he's, he lost his love of his life, but now he's able to provide that for someone else. And he's still like a second love of his life, but you know what I mean? Like he's able to give that to someone else as their first. Yeah. It rhymes with the Taylor Swift song, Invisible String. Maybe all along that they were tied together, but they weren't able to find each other until now. Tying you to me. <laughs> like, I just, I, I love them. I, I'm a fan. Yes, I um, am too. And then they had a hot makeout sesh mm-hmm. in the hot tub. We still get those in Golden do, Bachelor. Yeah, so old people do make out a lot. I think, I think, if try to think of all the experience and all the things that they've done, they probably are the freakiest at old age. <laughs> That's true. Except for you Kathy. Know? Not Kathy. She's done nothing. <laughs> what do you mean? Because in the Never Have I Ever. She's oh like, yeah, Kat, except for Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, and then we have the cocktail party before the rose ceremony, and this is where you stopped watching, right? Yes, Amy? this is where I, which apparently I missed a lot. 
Yeah, you might have to go back and watch just because if Ellen is the one, this was a pretty pivotal moment mm -hmm. that she told him he was she was falling in love with him. And then she's mm -hmm. he said it back to her and he's like, It's just so weird. Like I'm in the same spot as you. I never like the last time that this happened, like it was my wife. And this was very emotional for both of them. And she mm -hmm. says she thinks she found the love of her life now. This is what she's been waiting for her whole life. Oh my god. And like gosh. it was a very deep, like moment. Did she did he say you're my girl? I was gonna say the same thing. The sneak preak, they're like kind of kissing, and he pulls back and he's like, You're my girl. I was like, whoever he says that to, because he I also think it could trick us. It was Alan. It all was the Alan. Time. Yeah. But I was just like, oh my gosh. Yes. Well, I think because he said that it must be El it's, I know for sure Ellen's top two. Mm -hmm. So it's between he does have very strong feelings for the other person too. So I think it might like be Ellen and Leslie, and he doesn't want to hurt Leslie because Leslie, like, has never had that. So it's harder to harder to hurt her. I think. Yeah, and he's very much an empath or empath yeah. or however you yeah. say it. Like he mm -hmm. feels what other people feel, kind of similar mm -hmm. to me. And I, I think it's just he Tearing feels her just apart. as much as what he knows is going to be to her. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's I am I am going to have Kleenex for the finale. I think yeah. I'm going to cry my freaking eyes out. <laughs> I really think I am. So they had a moment. Then mm -hmm. there was a very interesting moment with Nancy. You remember her? Mm -hmm. I know so Nancy. I know exactly who she is. She just basically goes up to him and it's like, you know, like we have a great connection, but I just kind of see you more passionate for some of these other relationships you've done. And so mm -hmm. I just think that like, I'm not one of those people like, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like, I can't dispute that. <laughs> okay and she's like okay and then they just have a very amic amical breakup and then she just leaves before the rose ceremony okay i knew something happened because it bounced to where it was live so then i had started the rose ceremony and i was like something had happened but i didn't know oh, they were all crying like crazy yeah okay yes and then i guess the only other thing that kind of surprised me before the rose ceremony is susan aka chris jenner mm -hmm. and him had a pretty steamy makeout didn't see that one coming. She was like on my before that. She was kind of on my list of who I thought was going to go. Yeah, um, but I have seen slowly seen they do have a connection. I yeah. But it was funny because when um I was like kind of thinking about the podcast and like what I thought about the Golden Bachelor and everything, and I was gonna come on here and say Ellen specifically. I and I didn't even see that scene. I'm like Ellen specifically has a realness about her. Like, she's just very herself, and it's very obvious that that's who she is. Gary and her went on that one-on-one uh, -on -one date, and he was like, she's one of the only ones I can, like, totally be myself around. That means a lot. And so I yeah, think moving yeah. forward, like, knowing that he is who he is, and she is who she is, and it's very obvious. I don't know. I'm you just know saying. You know what Trista said to him? I don't know if you saw this part, but Trista said, don't try to find the one you could live with. Try to find the one that you can't live without. And yeah. so I think this episode... I think he was thinking with the old mindset before, and I think mm -hmm. he has switched his mindset. And even though I just talked about the invisible string with him and Leslie, I do mm -hmm. feel like there's some type of destiny that is intertwined with Ellen and Gary because Laurel and Susanna, like she has that friendship with the person who's sick and we now know has passed. Mm -hmm. And like she pushed and pushed Ellen to do this, even though mm -hmm. she was kind of not be there for the last few months. And I think mm -hmm. it was like, it was almost like an angel, like her best friend is like, I have to leave you, but you're going to be okay because you have Gary. That's okay, like how literally I, I have goosebumps and I want to cry now. But it's true. Uh. That's how I kind of feel. Like, I think he's going to end up with Ellen. And I think she, she I don't think she would have been okay just if her friend left and she like, like she's going to be okay now. And I think her friend, I hope her friend made it to know at least that she's engaged to him or she's that she's going to be okay before she leaves. I, I kind of hope we get a FaceTime call with the friend at the end know, when they are proposed. I hope so too. I have goosebumps all over too. I don't want to cry. So let's move I on. I know. Well, I guess you can't see it on here, but I, my, t my eyes welled. Yes. So, um, <laughs> Let's just Where do we even go? I can't get over it. <laughs> okay, so we have the rose ceremony, and these are the people who leave. Nancy left during the cocktail party, and then we have um Kathy and April. Kathy and April left. Which doesn't didn't surprise me one bit. Thank goodness. I'm really over Kathy. I don't mm -hmm. really want to watch another week of her. It's yeah. like annoying. And April was, I don't think there was a genuine connection. I think but they she had was very fun. fun. I'm yes, gonna miss very, her. A lot of fun. I'm gonna miss her too. I'm not gonna yep. miss Kathy. No, not take at your all. negative energy elsewhere. <laughs> Sayonara, Sammy. All right, let's let's move on to Bachelor Paradise. 
I don't want to talk about the poop baby for very long. <laughs> um, so let's just like skip to the end. <laughs> no. Um, so she leaves. Sam leaves. <laughs> And yeah. she, even at the rose ceremony or the cocktail party, um, the update is she still has not pooped. Um, but the only really thing I wanted to talk about was, did you see, I posted on Instagram, is Rachel talking about the hate Bachelor in Paradise is getting. Yeah. What did you think of that video? I agree. It's supposed to be silly and all those things, but it's a little too far on some of these things for me. So I don't know. Yeah, she says on the text, like, justice for toe sucking, justice for <laughs> pooping. And I'm like, justice for the turtles. Because I don't know about you, but <laughs> turtles are forever ruined for me now. I know, seriously. Justice for I the cannot. fucking turtles. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on, because I don't want to talk about it anymore. What did you think about Aaron B., Eliza, and John B.? Aaron B. and John B. Oh, she likes the bees. I didn't connect that till right now. Probably likes the D's too. <laughs> Probably does. I think Eliza is a little unfair, personally, because with Aaron, she's like, if you talk to another girl, like, basically, I can't handle that. But then she's like, well, I didn't do it right last time. Wait, it, it makes zero. It sense. makes zero sense. Last time, this is exactly what you did, and then you got feelings for both of them, and then you freaked out and you left. So, how is this? I guess it the was... difference is she's going to be able to emotionally handle herself. So, I guess we'll find out. But the problem for me was when she came back from the John B. day of having a great time, making out, telling, basically telling Aaron B. I thought of you the whole time. We're good. Don't worry. But mm -hmm. then still stringing along John B and talking about how it's going to be a hard choice. I don't mm -hmm. think Aaron B knows this. No, no. It's, it's confusing. Very, yeah, I, I actually have truly never been an Eliza fan. Uh, she broke Rodney. Yeah. Or Justin. It was Rodney yes, and Justin was the triangle Justin, last season. Justin, whatever. He was sorry. okay. Yeah, I mean, he can be, he's got, yeah. But Rodney is a very loyal, like, whatever guy. And she freaking just crushed him. And I yeah. hated it. And yeah. so then now I'm like, you're doing it again. Yes. So I'm confused too, because she does seem so sweet. I actually do like her. Mm. She and she, I think she's drop dead gorgeous. She reminds oh, yeah. me of the girl from The Little Mermaid. And I think that's why oh, they totally. have her on, like, on during the intro. She's, like, on the, um... The rock, like the little mermaid part with like the ocean uh -huh. behind her. She's gorgeous, gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous. But like, I just don't understand her. Yeah, so maybe that is. We'll see. Just, we're not the same. That's all. Yeah. Like, the way we and handle our emotions are not the same. It was like Rachel's energy was my energy. I was shocked that she went on the date and they mm -hmm. were, they're like the only like solid legit couple. couple mm -hmm. That like me and you said last week that we think that they could make it to the end. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not so sure anymore. Maybe. But I don't know. We'll, I'm I hoping, think it'll be very telling next week. Yeah, exactly. I'm hoping the next episode she just squashes it, chooses Aaron, and then they just move on and they're Smooth like boyfriend sailing. and girlfriend. And because if not, then she's she's not going to end up with anyone. Yeah, because I don't know for me, I'm not necessarily overly attracted to John B or Aaron B. Me either. But I think Aaron B is a step up from John B for me. I don't find John B attractive at all. Well, myself. and I also just think like they've had so long to to create this connection. How can one guy coming in and one nice romantic date, which I know can be like a lot of, you know, you get the the love yeah. vibes and all that. But I don't think it should take away all everything you've developed with someone else. Yeah. So then John Henry, Olivia, Pilot Pete. If this is the love triangle I never saw coming, I will say that. I shook it. <laughs> but I have so many thoughts. You go first, though. I just, I have grown. At the beginning, I don't know that I was an Olivia fan. I was kind of like, she's like, whatever. She's a little intense. But now I'm like, Olivia is my favorite. She's actually probably my favorite person she's on the She's so beach. real. So real. And I think that she, I think I would be her in this situation. I'd be like, I didn't even know I had one guy. Now I got two. And like, what do I do? I like, I like, that would be so confusing because her relationship with Pilot Pete has been a little bit like, they're just having fun, you know? feelings are there but just yeah, like there's you know a lot of pressure at that yeah. time and so then now john henry comes in and i think he's really shy so that's a little bit probably made it harder for her to make a complete connection too so she has two half connections that she can create into a whole connection but she just has to choose and i don't and she broke the bed that's that made me laugh 
funny. <laughs> no, what was funny to me is John Henry massaging her. She turns around and she's wearing that giant helmet for underwater. <laughs> I was like, I'm not so sure about that. Um, but yes, I love, love, love Olivia. I have loved her from the beginning. I thought she was freaking hilarious. Mm-hmm. And um, I love she's like, am I the bachelorette of paradise? <laughs> um, also, John Henry. I'm in love with him. Mm-hmm. The tattoos, the accent, him being so shy, the shaking of the date card. I, so I, I probably would, would die. beat that shit up. I Me would too. devour him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think all the girls there would. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's definitely got a different feel. Sorry, I spit on myself. Because um, <laughs> I feel like all the other guys are very like cocky, like, I know I'm hot. And mm-hmm. he doesn't have that. And I find that Which so I love. love. Same. I am Same. not for the cocky. I hate that. Yes, 100%. Mm-hmm. And I thought their date went really well. I am so pleased. If you do n- not choose John Henry, Olivia might lose a fan in me. <laughs> and, but then, because Pilot Pete only wants her now that John Henry wants her, and then that's when he's going to try to kiss her? You've had several days, mister. Maybe not several, yeah. but one day, but still. <laughs> um, and even one thing that really bothered me, and he was like, I didn't think that I, that we were I was going to like her that much. I know mm-hmm. that's not something I'd want said about me. Like, oh, I saw you and who you are. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to like you. But then I ended up liking you. Uh, that's I how do. I interpret it. Yeah, I think that maybe, though, they were just kind of hanging out with each other because they were kind of the only two left, like yeah. two couple. And then yeah. maybe he was like just having fun. And then he actually started to really like her because he didn't know her. I mean, nobody really knew Olivia before this. You yeah. have preconceived notions about a lot of the other ones. And I'm. I'm acting like I'm all for Pilot Pete, and I'm really not. I want Olivia to make her choice, and I'll be happy with whatever she chooses. I agree with you, though. Out of just, like, woman vibes, definitely John Henry. <laughs> Pilot Pete, I don't... He reminds me of a serial killer. I feel I like... I know, but everybody's going to love someone. Like, everybody deserves to be loved, so just because we Even don't Even serial like killers? Him. Well, he's not a serial killer. <laughs> they, they, have, they have... Well, I guess... I guess a real serial serial killer could probably fight through like a psych exam and seem normal. Oh yeah, I think they could yeah. beat it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So um, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, hoping because we didn't get to a rose ceremony, but I'm hoping she picks John Henry. And I think next up we have the big kind of Rachel swap. She's having kind of her first big moment this season. Um, talk to me. I- to me, it changed my opinion of Rachel a little bit. I wasn't impressed. I didn't like it. Really? Mm-mm. I, I loved didn't like it. it at all. No, I, I am, felt I'm team Rachel. You're team Sean? No, no. I'm not team Sean. I'm just didn't love the way Rachel handled it. Personally, I really didn't. I felt Come like on. here, I'll I'll read you what I wrote. You're gonna probably hate me. Maybe the whole world will. Like yeah. Rachel over overreacted, I think. She went bachelorette on him, and it's Brayden's fault to set her off, but she was kind of acting superior to Sean, like, you should, like, you should just want me, and, like, I don't know, I just, and, like, he didn't have the right to have a conversation with anyone else. Like, does she, like, especially because she doesn't even like him that much. Because if she doesn't, then who cares? I felt like she was just so focused on what other people are going to think about her, or that she was going to look stupid, when really... No, that's my first reaction to how she acted. Okay. But then once I heard that Sean actually really did say like, oh, she's so into me. If he really said that, then I get her reaction more. But at first it kind of seemed to me that Brayden just kind of like said that in a more extreme way that set Rachel off. And for her to like go up to the group and be like, I said I needed time. You need to leave. And it's just like, you're not in charge of the beach girlfriend. Like you are not the bachelorette. You are equal to these others. And to me, it just was a little superior moment in my opinion. But is she the same as everyone else? Because we've talked about this before of the different kind of tiers that bachelor people have. And she Mm -hmm. is a, yeah. And there are leagues also, which is also in real life Mm -hmm. and in real life and in a bachelor world, she's here and Sean's here. Yeah, And I think the fact that Sean's like trying to make it seem like she's so into, I would be pissed too. She yeah. is the bachelorette and she could get any guy she wants. And Sean's mm-hmm. going around saying that she's like the little puppy dog following him around. I would be just as pissed. And I honestly, it wasn't like she went full cat on him. 
She would listen to him. She realized she didn't like it. She didn't like what was going on. It was not going to be working for her anymore. Sean annoyed her and upset her and made her look away to to the beach, to the cameras, and she didn't like it. And so she told him, why does her saying her feelings and how she feels about the situation and being decisive and also not like going cry? I just, I personally saw a lot of growth from her since her bachelorette okay. season. And I, I didn't think there's anything wrong with the way she reacted. And I think Sean deserved it. And I hope Sean goes home. Yeah. And that conversation between Sean and Jess has got to be the most awkward thing that's ever happened. I hated it. I, know. I hated I it. I love how Jess makes fun of herself on social media the next day. Also, she made fun of herself for the bloating comment and she made fun of herself. I love you. I love you as a friend. <laughs> like, it was just so- <laughs> No, it was. It was really bad. But also it's like, does he not like read her body language ever? Because every single, and also that's another thing. He has been there for how long? And he's not talked to her once, but he wants to talk to her now when she's already had a connect. Like, dude, you had your chance and you missed it. You, I mean, bummer, bummer, dude. But don't try now because you're making yourself look stupid. And stop bringing Taylor Swift into it. She has nothing to do with this. I know. And That's like his one like Taylor anything. Swift. Do you even no, like Taylor knows Swift? Nothing. Yeah. He knows nothing. No. He, no. I, I, right there on the spot, I'd be like, okay, sing to me all too, all too well the 10 minute version. Then I'll believe you. <laughs> and then I'll walk, then I'll walk off this beach with you right now. Yep. Yep. And he <laughs> would not even get through the first line. Um, so yeah, that was annoying. And then kind of what happened was Brayden and Rachel, which if you remember from the first day, she was excited to meet Brayden. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Oh, I'm all about it. Their matchup. <laughs> I've also been waiting for it because I know I saw a scene from next week's episode, like on the beginning trailer. So I'm like, I knew they were going to kiss. I've said that. I knew that they were going to kiss at some point. So I was kind of waiting for it. And um, to a certain extent, I also like that Brayden really like went to Rachel and told her what was happening and gave her that versus like, I mean, I don't think it was also his in. Yeah. I don't think he did it correctly either. (laughs) Because he's he and he knew it though. Because remember when he walked up to the voice, he's like, "I don't think I did that right," or like he said <laughs> he something knew. like that. He knew he fucked up. And <laughs> yeah. then I actually thought it was super cute with the secret box. Uh, how he just shoved in a bunch of. I think Rachel and Brayden should make out. It was him. He just yeah. shoved a bunch of them in there, <laughs> and oh. they got to make out. Yeah. Why did we not talk about that? Or are we, at, are we there yet? Are we waiting? We're not there yet. I kind of okay. skipped ahead. I have a little bit more to say about Braid and Rachel. First. Okay. So I liked it. I thought that they were cute together when they were sitting, making out. And then um, I think he said like, oh, next week. And she's like, next week? Like, are you? And then she kissed him. Like, so I just, He's I He's getting her Yeah. I yeah, don't know that cute. it's like long term, but it's, yeah. it's cute. They're cute. I'm glad Rachel got to make out with someone. I'm like, yay you. Um, They're mm-hmm. not getting engaged. Yeah. And so, yeah, but also totally glad too, because I didn't want to see her leave just because, which exactly. she wouldn't have. Any of the guys would have just been like, Rachel, you need yeah, to she's Rachel. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And then we see, oh, I kind of am skipping ahead. That's but, okay. Um, we'll go back to whatever else we need. We see someone coming down the beach right before the rose ceremony, which I kind of love it when they do that. Mm-hmm. Who do you think it is? I saw a blonde. It was someone who's blonde. Uh, my vote's Christina Mendrell. <gasps> I hope so. I mean, I'm like hoping for it. That would be a bombshell drop right before the rose ceremony. And so what guys I do we have it. floating around? Okay, we've got Aaron John. S, John B, and Sean. Oh, whoever, Pilot Pete and John Henry, kind of like the love yeah. triangles, whoever doesn't get the yeah. rose for them. Down. Not I kind of <laughs> like John Henry and Christina Mandrell. I feel like they could balance each other. She's just kind of larger than life. He's a little bit more shy and like with the tattoos, I could see her being into that and the southern accent. I, I don't know. It, but then I also Maybe? am like, he might be too nervous. He really might be too nervous. Yeah, she might be too much for him. Yeah, I think but that he might just go into a shell and like not track talk. sometime. Olivia That's is true. pretty out there. Mm-hmm. And he likes her. I don't know, maybe. But yeah. okay. Let's go into the secret the truth box. box. Oh yeah. What did you think box. about it in general? I want there to be more order to it. I want there to be more rules. Yes. I agree with just- that. The only thing that's running through my head is Aaron S, are you an actual psycho? 
That part confused me. Was that like um scripted part? Like, oh, do this because we're bored and you have I don't know, do. but Wells kind of was actually... like Wells was like, that's not nice. That's like, fandom. I think everybody was like, you are what is wrong with you right now? You're crazy. Yeah, I don't understand. Um, I personally thought it was a gimmick for the show and it mm-hmm. wasn't of his own doing because if it was of his own doing, that's a little red flaggy. That's what um, I'm saying. So I kind of hope, <laughs> I hope he was told to do that. Yeah. If not, yikes. Yeah. And then we have the cat of it all. Cat versus Aaron S. Cat versus the world. Like, she, I'm insane. sorry, too much. She was I, so worked there's, up. There's no, there's no way to defend that at this point. Like, I agree. I agree. I, I think she is valid. To She's feel the way she is. She just needs to not be on television to do it, so that the world can see it. Because that's at the same time, she's great TV. That is true. There, there's no other. There, you no, need to watch the, a train wreck. The fact that they like heard her screaming from up. Like, do you not realize that the whole like what Tanner is probably like Tanner? That's another guy. Oh, Tanner, yeah. Christina Mandrell. Tanner and Christina Mandrell. I'd be into who Tanner went on a date or is she he going on a date? He didn't go on a oh, date with anyone there. Peek. That's a sneak peek. Never mind. Because she, did you see the sneak peek? Cat goes, we th- think she's crazy in this, this episode. She goes to a different level. It's her birthday next week. And she oh. throws the cake in the ocean. Tanner goes on a date on her birthday. Brayden is smiling from ear to ear. Like, next week's going to be a shit show. Yeah, Cat is just... She's the kind of like it's a lot. Who that scares me. Like I don't want to <laughs> know what's gonna happen next because it makes me cringe so hard that I have to like close my eyes. I cannot with it. Same Z's. Yeah. Yeah. So any last thoughts? I I do have a football game to watch. It starts, <laughs> I think, in about an hour. People think Taylor Swift's gonna be there. The people she left a couple hours on her private jet, and we think she's coming to camp. Like it's the L.A. Chargers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Ooh, I know things. I know. I, I learned on. things. <laughs> yeah, this is what I wrote. Brain eats French fries with cat. That surprised me. <laughs> they were all sitting, and Brain was there with like. And cat oh, was right I was there. I was surprised I was like, too. Okay. Then yeah, yeah. Um, I also have Sean's a Dumbo. Yes. Cat yep. is nuts. Poor Tanner. Yep. Karma yep. is working this season. Will and now Cat, because Cat did that to Brayden, and now Karma's coming for yeah, her with Karma's Tanner. In full effect. Karma's and on the set like, like a bounty hunter. That's my second Taylor Swift lyric for the episode. <laughs> um, another birthday bummer. Because who else had left on their birthday? Oh, Tammy. Yeah. So okay, and then I'm not saying we're gonna keep all this. I'm just talking. Where no, did I love the French? It. What is this? Where did the Frenchie come from? Where did the Frenchie come from? What would that? I don't know. Where did did someone speak French? No French fry. Or was I like not wanting to say the F word? Where did the F he come from? But who's he? And why did I I write this? I couldn't tell you. (laughs) Well, there you go. If anyone can crack, if anyone can crack the code, comment below. (laughs) See ya. All right, folks. We crack the code before we even finish the episode it was the last scene with jess running around with her shoe and i was like where did the frenchie come from where did the little french bulldog come from who's is that and why a beat? because at the beginning of the episode she, uh, the french bulldog was with sam because when they were walking the beach too and she's like oh. even my friend's dog um can't get me to poop or something ridiculous like that so i'm thinking it's a producer's dog who they took to like to oh. be while they're or what if it's one of the cast dogs they'd probably play on that more if it was yeah i i yeah. don't think that's the case i think my guess is one's producer so we have new episodes every monday recapping the golden bachelor and bachelor in paradise our episodes are available anywhere you listen to podcasts and if you listen on apple Podcasts, please write and review we will love you forever and then our if you're a video watcher um it's on youtube so subscribe hit that little bell for notifications so you'll be the very first to see all of our new episodes as they come out Make sure to follow us on TikTok and Instagram. We are there to tell you all the tea, everything that's happening in real time um, at Stop Wearing My Clothes Pod. And if you would like, we'd love checking our email, um, Stop Wearing My Clothes Pod at gmail.com and give your reality TV, pop culture, or bachelor hot takes. And that is the end of our episode. Thank you for watching. See you next week.